OK, here we go. System.data.datatable. I know that one of these is used as the data source for the data grid view in my query form. I also know that it shouldn't be there anymore. So I'm just going to expand this node, zoom back in a little bit, then click this link to look at the instances of data table that appear along the path I've expanded. Now this is really interesting. First off, there are two of them. That surprises me because I'm only expecting to see one data table here. But I'll worry about that in a second. Because the other really striking thing about this is Captain Chubby up here, using 800k with all his children. I want to find out why this data table has been leaked. What's holding it in memory? To do this, I'm going to create an object retention graph. This graph will show me what's still referencing my data table and hence why the garbage collector is unable to collect it. Once I know that, I can modify my code to break the chain of references keeping the data table in memory. OK, let's click the button and see what happens. Here's my graph, and you can see it's zoomed in on the data table I chose in the instance list. There's also a handy hint here telling me to start there at the bottom and to work my way back up the graph until I find a reference that needs to be broken. Note that I don't need to break all the references, I just need to break the chain at one point to allow the garbage collector to clean up everything below that. So let's take a look at what the graph is telling me. First off, it's telling me that my data table is referenced by this data grid view data connection, which in turn is referenced by this data grid view. And look what we have here hanging around like a bad smell, our very own query form. This is the window I used to execute my query earlier, and it definitely shouldn't exist anymore. Let's move further up the chain of references to see why it's still in memory. OK, so this system.eventHandler is referencing my query form, and if we step up one more level we can see that the event handler is referenced by our connect form instance. This is the form that asks me for the database connection details. If we look at this node more closely, we can see that it's actually being referenced by Connect Form's foregrounded field. So, the reason that this query form is hanging around is that Connect Form is indirectly holding a reference to it via what looks like an event called foregrounded. I suspect an event because of the system.eventHandler reference by foregrounded. We can check easily enough by looking at the code. Let's switch to Visual Studio and see what's what. Here's the connect form source and here's the foregrounded event. Let's find out where this is used. We've got three usages here and we can see that this one is where query form registers for the foregrounded event, but it doesn't look like it ever unregisters. I suspect if we fix that, then the memory leak will go away. Before I do that though, I want to see what the story is with that other data table. So I'm going to go back to the instance list and create another object retention graph, like so. This looks more complex but let's walk up the chain of references and see what we can see. This all looks like part of the ADO.NET framework. And you can see some static variables up at the top here, along with this GC handle. You can also see another set of references going off to the left here, which takes us back up to our query form. And ultimately, that foregrounded event. That's interesting, but I suspect that because of these static variables we're not going to be able to free this instance of data table even when we've broken this chain of references from the foregrounded event. OK, let's go back to the source code. The place to unregister the foregrounded event is in the query form's disposed method. But since query form doesn't have a reference to the connect form, I'm going to have to store that in a member field.
There we go. Now let's modify Dispose. OK, that's done. We just need to rebuild. Great, that worked. OK, back to the profiler to start up a new profiling session and repeat the process. Notice that it's remembered my settings from last time around, so all I need to do is click Start Profiling. We have a similar deal to last time. I'll take my first snapshot to use as a baseline. Now I execute my query. Now close the window and we expect the memory usage to decrease and yet it hasn't. So what's going on? We need to take a second snapshot. Now let's look at the new objects to see if query form is still in the list. The query form is still live, so why is that? Let's create an object retention graph. Strange it doesn't look like it's being referenced by anything. Let's uncheck hide finalizer queue GC roots as this tip down here suggests to see if it makes any difference. Aha, there we go. The query form is still in memory because it's referenced via the finalizer queue. This means that next time we take a snapshot it should have disappeared because taking a snapshot forces a full garbage collection and objects only referenced via the finalizer queue will be collected as part of this. Let's try it. OK, now let's see if there's a query form in there again. No, it looks like it's gone. Let's just double check. No, it's definitely not there and you can see the memory usage has dropped as well. Fantastic! It looks like we fixed our leak. Remember, the way I did this was to start off with the type whose memory usage grew the most, then work my way back until I found something I recognized using the class reference graph. Then I investigated individual instances of that type to find out what was holding them in memory. Using the object retention graph, I was able to easily find an instance of one of my own types that was responsible for the leak again just by working backwards through the chains of references. You should be able to use this technique for a lot of the memory problems you'll encounter in your own applications. I haven't covered advanced topics like filtering. This is beyond the scope of this tutorial video, but I hope that you've now gained enough of an understanding about memory profiling to be able to productively locate memory leaks. That's all for this tutorial, so goodbye for now.